everybody knows this beast from Latvia. I don't know, man. Okay, for those who don't know, this is Daniel Slyzans, the calisthenics miracle performing skills like one arm front lever, Maltese, planche push ups, and much more, while being 184 centimeters tall and quite heavy, that's obvious. So why I think Daniels is falling behind in calisthenics with all that crazy stuff he can do? Well, the short answer is because of his height and weight. <laughs> in my previous video, I discussed this topic in detail, but basically your height and mainly leverages determine what skills you can possibly achieve and how good you can be in calisthenics overall. Let's quickly go over how he even got to the top in the first place. Daniels won a jackpot because he was perfectly made for calisthenics even with being this tall, which caused him with two years of gymnastics background and then after a year of calisthenics learn the one arm front lever, planche and sternal Maltese, boosting him way ahead of everyone at that time. To be more specific, I'm talking about 2014, so this stuff he could already do was something insane. Like every sport, even Kaisten's competitions were evolving and they started to slowly look more like today's competitions, meaning in order to win, the athlete needed to do both weighted <laughs> what? Both dynamics and statics, in which Daniels again excel, because he learned pretty fast triple swing 360, swing 540, shrimp flip and even ganger. And boom, he was again at the top, because yeah, there might be someone stronger in statics, but on the other hand, he couldn't do even a simple 360 and vice versa. Like for example Korash, that was a 360 king, but not a king in statics. <laughs> That's why he stayed at the top for so long. He could do pretty advanced static moves, strength moves, uh, maybe not for too long or for not too many reps, but he could do them. Plus he was mixing them with also pretty high level dynamics, at least at the time. Not mentioning his unique style that he developed over those years, that many athletes copied. <laughs> and being tall and heavy just magnified it all. We can quickly go through, for example, this, I think, 8 rounds battle against Kobiakov at the Battle of the Bars. Here you can clearly see that Daniel's level was just out of this world and Kobiakov didn't have even a chance. It was full planche against bad form sterile planche, zero front lever hold against one arm front lever. And well, the dynamics part was a little bit more equal, but yeah, the battle was pretty pointless since everybody knew who's gonna win. Same story was the whole 2018 FIBO. First round against Sodoxin was pathetic. <laughs> <laughs> Second guy was weaker than 2014 Daniels. Third one, uh, like he was good, but still no chance. <laughs> and the last guy was finally a little bit worthy opponent. Anyways, it still wasn't enough to beat him. And I truly recommend to check out the origin video to truly understand how OP Daniels was. Meanwhile, Daniels was at the top, beating everyone. Something in the background was slowly but surely forming. And it was the new, better, stronger and mainly shorter generation of calisthenics athletes. Why shorter guys are a problem? Well, if they do calisthenics for real, not like Sodoxin, they are unbeatable because of their insanely good leverages, being more agile and overall what is easier to get moving, 80 or 55 kgs body. The first reality check that calisthenics is a sport of short dudes was when Daniels end up in the finals battling Iquan, which by the way disappeared somewhere. <laughs> Iquan in this battle looked like he came there 100% fresh because he threw front flip regrab in the final battle, plus Maltese press and all that crazy stuff against which Daniels couldn't do anything, since he was tired and he had a ripped hand. And then the second time was a few months back at the Street Workout Ultimate Battles 5, where I knew that uh, it is already lost, since there was also Christoph. Simon is just a weaker Daniels. Damn! Kuate had too big ego and felt like a million times. And so Daniels got into finals. 
but because Christoph is literally half of his size, as you can see, he obviously lost. So this is where Daniel's journey ends, or like chances of getting the first place, because today's short dudes are literally almost like on steroids and pretty much unbeatable. Well, definitely at least for Daniels as a tall and heavy guy. Which brings us back to the problem why calisthenics and calisthenics competitions mainly aren't for tall guys. Look, a normal tall guy like me, for example, have a zero chance to do stuff like Valentine. Full Maltese presses like it's nothing, full planche push-ups, um, we'll skip those. <laughs> Basically you need this level of statics, which isn't really achievable even for Daniels. Yeah, he learned to hold a one-arm planche, but it seems like he lost it again, which just shows that it's really hard to make from this move something you do on regular basis like Valentine or Christoph. It was just a matter of time when Daniels will like Plato and hit his limits, at least in statics. In dynamics you can, I think, you can like always learn something new. For sure he managed to clean his front level pull-ups, add archer planche push-ups and one dynamic trick, the frisbee or how is it called, but that's not enough. And overall Daniels does pretty much the same stuff for the past couple of years. Just better. Plus his short break during those covid years he mentioned in his video I believe. Uh, boosted Christoph way ahead of him. Simply certain skills are not achievable for everyone. That's, that's why I think competitions are ridiculous, because they are comparing someone who can achieve them and someone who can't. Let's say one finger one arm planche. To be able to do it, you gotta be short, light, with good leverages and have a thumb made of steel. Daniels in this case doesn't meet even one thing. Okay, scale it down to, for example, Maltese presses, in which the same short dude with good leverages will excel, or just simply it will be easier for him to perform it for reps. If everybody would be the same height, then it would be just your problem that you are weak. But a normally thinking human being just can't compare a giant and the hobbit. That's just, that's just, bleh. <laughs> That's just ridiculous and it's like comparing big heavy truck and light sports car. Same like life is unfair sometimes, so are Kaisting's competitions, which sadly are owned by short guys, which got lucky and ended up being short with good leverages, like I said million times already. <laughs> so it's not really Daniel's fault, it's just that short guys are better in this stuff. And that's actually not really a new thing. It happened with La Rosa, it would happen even with Victor if he would battle him, Eric or anybody from the old generation. Anyways, this Saturday Daniels will be competing in the competition Beast of the Bars and after checking pretty much every athlete, uh, I don't know. It is again full of short dudes, so Daniels will need to pull off harder combos, more likely right from the start losing strength right from the start and so his chances to win the competition. But maybe he will surprise us with something like in his training vlog, in his latest training vlog, where he did that white full planche slash Maltese archer push-up, which I didn't know he can do it. So maybe even here he will pull off something crazy. I don't train with him, so I don't know. For sure Daniels has one big, ad <laughs> one big advantage. And that are his experience he gathered after those years, which some of his opponents won't necessarily have. So let's wish him all good luck, because he will need it in this battle of giant against million short dudes. <laughs> good luck bro.